I think I have a voice when I do my show. I have the chance to have more people to hear my voice and I wanted to use it. It's not sexy, but very feminine and very sensual. For me, this is very important for this collection. We create clothes that is not a trend that is going to die down just now. This is timeless. It was nice to see these personal references to the way she dressed throughout the years, to her own experience growing as a designer. So it was actually a fantastic collection on its own. We are celebrating individuality, we're celebrating women, so we're kind of making the girls better versions of themselves, basically. We are doing a side part just to keep a certain amount of continuity within it, but the texture is their own texture. If they've got curly hair, we're leaving it curly, smooth, we're leaving it smooth. But we are doing a side part just to give them a little bit of androgyny, just to give a sense of attitude, and I like that. We're using the Moroccan oil root boost and spraying that throughout the hair. And then, depending on what the girl's hair really wants to do, we're playing with it. So if she's got smooth hair, we're just making it nice and gorgeous and smooth. If she's got wavy hair, we're using a curling iron just to define the curls a little bit more. If she's got tight curls, we're using a smaller curling iron and making it, again, very defined and very beautiful. The makeup today really is about transparency. It's about this almost ethereal, and angelic-like makeup that's bright. We're concealing the face, right, with just concealer, and then using a bit of foundation, but it's about this transparent highlight that we're using. It almost looks almost a, like ghostly. And it's to highlight the top of the cheek, the eyelid, under the eye, the bridge of the nose, top of the lip, and also chin. So really pretty, super fresh, like really ready for the streets. I think the everyday woman can wear this. It really is about this sort of opaly brightness, so, so adding light to the face. So Aaron DeMay designed this look and he's using Pearl and Luna cream color base as the main parts of the look, but we're adding gloss to the eyelids at the very end and line up. So it just brings this beautiful, fresh, glowy dew that almost looks angelic. because I think I have a voice when I do my show. I have the chance to have more people to hear my voice and I wanted to use it. Yeah, last year I already started realizing that I'm going to be actually celebrating the 20 years of my uh, being at the helm of creative director for Missoni in September. And okay, one of those moments where you start analyzing what I've done, what is Missoni, what is it. And I realized that in fact, uh, for the work I've done in the past 20 years, I. I rely on my memories, uh, I, and I was also saying I, I do not go in the archives to do research. I have everything in me and my memories, and my, I might ask something, but I know what I'm going to ask for the archive. This time I said, you know what, I better go and look because... And I realized that many things that I gave for granted 
or looks or pattern that I maybe set on board or whatever because you you change your point of view through the years yeah but luckily I mean we are the same person I'm the same person but luckily I can change my point of view <laughs> and I'm very happy for that and so in fact uh, I went to the archive and I started seeing things in a totally different way and I found them very inspiring. So I was looking for my mom periods, which I mean, soon it will be 65 at the end, or I think next year more or less. And 20 of my collections, and uh, very impressive also for me to realize. But there's a lot of, lot of inspiration, and I was happy to see them with, uh, with a new eye and a fresh eye, and translate them in this new collection. Translate them, of course, nothing has been taken the same. Of course, you rework because it would be too boring to copy. But it was such a huge inspiration, and it's gonna go on for you're gonna see more. <laughs> The Pink Mountain, it's the vision I have on a good day in front of my window, my bedroom, and but also in front of my office and also in front of the window of my mom's house. So it's an addiction, it's a family addiction. It's a mountain that gets pink at the, when the sun rises in the morning. And so it's really something that gives me a lot of energy. And But also for me, it symbolizes this mountain of pink uh, pussy hat uh, around the world that you cannot, that people cannot deny. It's a mountain of women protesting in, around the world. Everybody that has a voice anyway needs to raise his voice, even for you, your neighbor to tell what you think, to tell. We need, we really have to fight for women's rights, but we need to fight for all uh, human rights. Uh, we need to, we need to get together to make really a bond. Uh, all the fashion community, it's on the same path. We all do think the same, just let's show it and give strength also to the people that has a lower voice, just tell them yes, you have to be out there. We are taking influence from the clothes. I looked at the collection and there seems to be a bit of an Americana spin on the collection this season at number 21. And so we thought about making the girls look like skater boys from Los Angeles, because I love that whole vibe. So we're using Plea, which is a L'Oreal professional product, all the way through the hair, and then drying it in with my hands, scrunching a bend in there, not really wanting to over-process it too much by using a curling iron. And after that, we're using these really cool little clips. In my mind, it's very much a Courtney Love type of vibe. You know how Courtney Love would have that kind of day after the night before hair? but then she'd have something cute in her hair as well. So it's very much that, really. Very cool and very easy hair. The palette for the collection is very nude, so we decided to do a natural makeup, but who have a little bit of elegance and sophistication. So we do a burgundy eyeliner on top and over the burgundy. We do another eyeliner with more of a tan mustard color, shimmery. So that makes the burgundy eyeliner even softer, more gentle. And the lips are very nude. So we want the girl to be polished, but not over made up. Uh, for me, it's the 
the most important muse icon and is Anna Magnani's the best Italian actress. The actress in one period in California for the two movies, the Rosta 2 and the skin, uh, the Pelle di Serpent, snake skin with Marlon Brando. It's not sexy, but very feminine and very sensual. For me, this is very important for this collection. She's uh, in California. This for me is very inspiration for the California with the, the beach, with the Cadillac. And the mixing with the varsity, 50 varsity the, for the American school. The force is completely fake, uh, and this for me is very important. And it looks like real, but all fake, all fake. This brocade is very Italian material for the pareti, for the wallpaper, like wallpaper, yes. Yeah, the shoes for me is completely important, but for all the, my collection, because the attitude is very important for me. And this season I want the very 50, 40 shoes, but with the embroidery very contemporary and with the, the color very unusual and very in contrast with the dress. Personality and attitude. This is for me is very important for the woman. It's not like a lot of dress, but personality. There is a major synergy, uh, interwining of cultures throughout history in art and of course very much so in fashion and today I think it's stronger than ever it was very evident and very strong with Madeleine Vionnet who worked with Ernesto Tayat for the logo for the lot of so she worked with a lot of artists in Italy we are in Leonardo da Vinci's house right now the one he lived in and there is this vineyard where the vines are still alive from that 16th century. The Birds of Paradise theme is taken from Ferdinand Magellan. He discovered the New Guinea 
beautiful birds that still live only there. Well, we started researching on the birds of paradise, which are so unusual looking. In fact, they really studied of why they evoluted. They are trying to look like flowers, I suppose. Look at this bird, I mean, it's just incredible. And we started looking for the first images. First of all, there was a beautiful myth that for the first 200, 300 years, they never saw them from the time Magellan had uh, discovered them in New Guinea. They never saw them not in flight. They were always in flight, always moving. They thought they didn't have feet. These photographs were taken by uh, a photographer that was commissioned by National Geographic to stay in New Guinea for a year, and only in 2013. Before the images were only in encyclopedias. And this is, uh, we took in a Britannica encyclopedia print, which of course was even the page you can feel is very, very old. And uh, it's printed on lame, very, very liquid uh, silk material. You can see the names in Latin and even the explanations. But all of those birds, there was no colored printing then. So they were all drawn by artists. For me, it's kind of a beautiful addition that every one of them is drawn into our print. And uh, of course then we started taking it further and it's been developed in many different ways as I'm sure you've seen in the collection. It's been transferred the inspiration also to the, to the girls that are this birds of paradise, just the energy, self-confident and proud of who they are, stepping in line with modernity, with today, with yesterday, being proud of the history but at the same time also being very much in today. We are today uh, made in Italy brand. We are a French brand. We treasure our history and obviously it's very French. It is as French as it can get, I think. However, we are in a made in Italy brand and uh, I feel very home here. Made in Italy is a big thing for me because not every brand is producing all in Europe. We create clothes that is not a trend that is going to die down just now. This is timeless, or at least this is what we're trying to achieve. That every, every piece will be an addition to your wardrobe forever, something that hopefully maybe even your daughter or your granddaughter will wear. This is what we're trying to achieve. It's very interesting because backstage she was telling reporters that she wasn't interested in making a political statement, but I think she was being very coy because you could see in the set lots of very, uh, no, not even that subtle references, the titles of the kind of fake movies that were, these posters on the wall were all related to feminist books. And in the show notes that they provided, the set design was very much uh, a reference to taking a, a liberal stand in difficult times and the importance of artists to make such a statement. Now, all of this you contrast with the collection of what was really just a lot of fun clothes. I mean, you couldn't look at a kind of a multi-tiered car coat that's made of suede, western fringe, a little bit of menswear, tweed, and say this is a statement about this, the politics of the world. But it was nice to see these personal references to the way she dressed throughout the years, to the, her own experience uh, growing as a designer. So it was actually a fantastic collection on its own.
a dorm room and a kind of um, soulful girl is very dear to my heart. So for me, it was a wonderful show of everything you'd sort of want from Prada. I love the prints, I love the skirt, I love the accessories, I love the mood, I love the attitude, I love the casting. So I, it, for me, it was a terrific, terrific show and sort of, in our sort of imaginations, what we want Prada to be, I think it delivered that. It was almost like a teenage girl's bedroom. All the Polaroids up around the edges of the bed. And, and I loved the eclecticness of it. It was really rich in like the textures and the embroideries and the colors. It was totally unapologetic about how much richness you could feel, but it wasn't ostentatious in its excess. It felt like old money. <laughs> if that's, it wasn't nouveau riche, it was, it was established. It was pieces from a mother's wardrobe or a teenage girl's favorite t-shirt worn with a really beautiful feathered trimmed skirt and a beaded coat. So it had this element of familiarity, but it still felt opulent and current. I thought it was a powerful product collection. From the very beginning to the very end, the hand-knitted scarves that looked like Granny was knitting them together with the beautiful beaded trims and feather trims that had a real rustic sense to them. All the super cool patched and pieced leathers and suede, amazing shoes, and the handbags were outstanding. You know, sometimes we see a recreation of an idea in the handbag from Yusha, but these looked very new to me. And I, I love that they were 70s, but 70s for now and not 70s for then. The girls look great. And you know, of course, all that interesting plumage that decorated a lot of the clothes last spring returns and we're seeing a lot of the plumage on coats, on the trim of skirts, even as kind of interesting little caps that the girls were wearing that floated down the runway. And if it wasn't plumage, it was interesting fur trim. And you know, I love Mucha because she's so thoughtful about how a woman lives. The trims were all on the front and they wrapped the back, but then the back where your legs are, there was no feather or there was no fur. So when you sit down, you're not crushing anything. And all those little details are important to me, but I thought the styling of the show was some of the best styling she has done in some time. Really, really good show. It actually felt quite inclusive to quite a broad range of ages and types of people. I think it's probably gonna reach quite a few different credit cards and wallets of people that will want to spend there. I'll be one of them, I'll be one of them. Yeah, and I said that when I went backstage, yeah, yeah. I have to say so far, Prada's probably my top pick of great collections this season in Milan. It was, it was really a powerful show. There was not one piece I did not love.